Hello, we're going to make a treasure chest asset here, which is going to work in a game engine. And uh, the object of the exercise is providing a surface texture template that can be edited in image editing software. Uh, the little complexity of this is that it's going to be made from two parts because we want to be able to open the lid on the top of the chest when it's part of um, a game environment. So uh, let's crack on. So the first thing to do is choose create geometry standard primitives box. Um, you can do this in any modeling software really um, but we're going to use keyboard entry to create the um, object exactly the right size. It's also going to be made in sort of sizing with in chunks of multiples of 10 and that means it's going to move nicely over the grid with snaps on it's going to be very easy to position it and the position of it is going to become important and uh, you'll understand the relevance of that in a little while but uh, we're going to use keyboard to create it and we hit that there and we look at the top and just orbit round we can see that it's dead central and but sitting on the grid it's not quite where we want it ultimately but um, uh, a lot of objects for games you really want to have created at this spot so feet of characters will sit on the grid and ordinarily any kind of floor based object would also be created sitting on the grid as well um, anyway uh, we'll get round to that so once the object is created and it's a fairly simple object. It's uh, nothing more than a flat-sided box, six polys or 12 triangles at this point, uh, but we need to start disrupting it. So we'll go to uh, modify and convert it to editable poly. You can do that by right-clicking either on the object or on the uh, listing of it in the modified stack. And so we'll go box, convert to editable poly. And as such, we can go to polygon mode and get rid of this top poly. Simply hit the delete key and it's gone. Now we can see inside. Okay, but it's a bit paper thin and we want to give it some substance. And for that, the good thing to use is the shell modifier. Now, we spent some time making sure that the um, outer dimensions of the box were um, multiples of 10 and going to fit nicely into any slot that could be pre-designed for taking this box, like a um, gap between a wall and a fireplace, for instance. But um, uh, the shell modifier will do add on an outer amount and or an inner amount or both. We just want the inner amount, and I'm going to give that three centimeters. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to have some thickness to it. Okay, so we uh, just check some of the settings, make sure we're not uh, doing anything else that might cause problems later. Seems all good. Now at this point, we're done with creating the inside. We want to start creating the outside, but we can't really because this shell is sort of on top of the editable poly and it's going to start uh, reacting to things going on underneath so we'll collapse it down to well, collapse all doesn't really matter either will do let's get rid of that message now it arrives as an editable mesh but we really want to make sure we can do all the full range of polygon edits to it um, so we convert it again to editable poly. Right, and now we can start treating the outside of it. So what I want to do is select all of the polys around the outside sides and um, start breaking them up a bit. Okay, so go to polygon mode. And then I'm going to use control key to add to this selection. So, control down, oops, 
and just click on the I'm just having a minor technical issue here so control down and control now you should remember to re use your readout to check that you've got, just got the four polys selected I'm going to do um, an inset Oh, you'll note also that I've got my polygon ribbon, poly modeling ribbon at the top here. I'm going to use that as much as I can, um, although it duplicates a lot of what's down here. But sometimes it's just quicker to find one of these rather than hunt along at the top poly. So I'll remember mostly, but uh, occasionally I'll just use the right poly, the right panel, like. Um, one used to before these things arrived. Now what I'm going to do is add an inset which gives us another line of polys. Which will create the effect of the metal bands on the outside of the chest. So I do that at 5 centimetres. That brings a nice sort of metal band effect. And uh, you can, of course, check round and see that it's done the same thing to each one as individuals. So I did it by polygon rather than this one, which is by group. You can see the difference. Okay, so happy with that. Because these inset polys are still selected, we can do the next thing, which is a negative extrude. So again with the settings and it wants to give us a positive one but we're going to change that to minus 0.5 hit return and that'll just give us the individual effect and if we zoom in we can just see that's just enough to suggest the thickness of the metal bands okay so that one has just been sort of done and um, we can move on to the lid now if I, okay then so let's go now to the um, the lid so back to create and because we've got some sizes defined for the box, of course the lid is going to bear some relationship to those. So we're going to do it by creating a cylinder. And uh, if we change the colour for this one, although it's probably going to vary it anyway. But anyway, so um, go into the cylinder and we want a radius of... 20 which is half the 40 uh, length so that will of course multiply up nicely um, but we should be doing this keyboard entry of course so hit right we're going 20 for the radius now the height which is the width of our box was 80 We're going to set up the uh, segments for it. Um, height segments are going to be one, so it's going to be kind of flat like the box. Cap segments one, we do want those. We want it to be smooth, so uh, it looks like a rounded top thing. Uh, but we're only going to give it, let's say, eight sides. Now, the amount of sides you choose depends very much on how this object is going to be seen and used in the game. So how close we're going to get to it is going to really define how well eight sides works or not. Uh, but we're going eight sides because you'll be able to see the effect and uh, make your own kind of judgments about what works in your circumstance. So we're going to slice on because what we're going to do is make sure that 
it just is half a cylinder down the uh, height axis. Um, so we're going to go uh, 180 on that. And let's go create without further ado. So now the, the uh, way it creates a cylinder is, of course, by standing it on the grid. Uh, which means it obviously needs rotating in order to make it in the right um, orientation to be the lid of our chest. So um, uh, there's every uh, reason to do that early on, but what you might want to do is just sort out the base part and do the uh, shelling of that before we do the rotation. So I'm just going to spin around, and as you can see there, we've got two polys here that we want to get rid of if we're going to uh, shell a lid for this. Now again, you can decide that you don't really need to bother doing this because it's not really going to be seen in game. When the lid opens, we're not going to be looking inside the lid, we're going to be looking inside the chest. But uh, just in case you wanted to do the full job on it, Let's convert this now to uh, editable poly. Let's go to modify and right click it and convert it. And now it's an editable poly. Just as before, we select the two polygons we don't need anymore. And holding control down for multiples, hit the delete key and they're gone. Now you might be a bit worried at this point that it really has kind of lost a whole end. So if we just turn the base of the chest off, you can see it's all okay still. So then we go modify this shell just as we did before and add three centimeter inner and no outer. Okay, now it's got segments at one, which is what we want. And again, looking for things like segments, sides, shapes, steps, uh, even iterations. Um, sometimes you want to keep all those things down to one if they'll go that far. Other times you can sort of see really what um, what's better for the circumstance you're going to try and use for well, by hitting straighten corners I got rid of that kind of kink that was uh, as a result of the uh, these edges here being kind of stretching the uh, shell out somewhat anyway so that's looking okay at the minute now you can see in, inside, you can see this sort of profile here, fairly curved, not too bad. Maybe we're not going to get so close to it. But you can also see it's quite nice and smooth. So the effect on the wood bit would be quite nice, like a rounded shaped bit of wood. Okay, so um, then what we're going to do is uh, create the banding effect with the inset and then the extrude. Now the problem with that is going to be that you can't do it all at the same time like you did with the uh, base bit of the chest. So we have to do the, the roll top first and then go back and do the uh, sides, which at the moment are top and bottom. So I'm going to select, well, do my collapse first, collapse all. Convert to editable poly. I'm now in poly mode. I can select all of the outer polys on the roll top. I'm going to put the ignore back facing on just to make sure I don't get any ones that I don't want. And sometimes with ignore back facing on and with crossing and a rectangular marquee you can do multiples so let's see what I can get here I should end up with 
six, seven, just seven. Okay, so I do my um, inset here. See, there I am using the old style again. So I'm going to go inset for five centimeters, uh, and it's set to group now because we want to do all those as one. And then it's back to just these two end ones. And insert those. And that's, remember the five setting setting. Five centimeter setting. Even. So that's good. And then we go back and we should be able to do the extrude all on the one, maybe. No, I'm still going to do that as individuals. Okay, so we'll do the extrude first while we're here. And again, it's forgotten. So it's minus 0.5. Return. Accept that. And then select. And again, just seven poly selected. Do the extrude. This one up here takes slightly longer, but it works just the same. So this one's going as a group. And so that's done now. Now to do the rotation, to rotate it back to how it should be oriented. Um, we can turn the box on for now and um, do the rotation on the top level object so go to editable poly level now we want to definitely have angle snap on for this so when you do select and rotate it's going to stay at nice easy 5 degree chunks or increments. That was 90. The readout's not necessarily easy to see by your action, but if you look at the bottom along the X, Y, and Z, you can see the 90 set there. And then likewise for this uh, axis here. Now that's the uh, Y axis. So if I put, um, it's not going to be, that's going to be positive 90. So if I do uh, 90 there. So I'm typing on the keyboard 90 and hit return. Wrong axis. Now I'm not going to uh, spend any time trying to work it out. I'm just going to hit and hope. Now you can see it's rotated in the right orientation now, and it's sort of in line there, but it needs to be left a bit and up a bit. If you remember the dimensions of the box, the height is 30. So if we go now to um, snaps for position, but I'm going to leave the angle snap on much more useful than it's not wanted and when you've got the snaps on you can see the cursor changes and starts trying to jump to grid lines now with this one I can use the axis readout and type in the numbers I need straight away so uh, in the Z it should be plus 30 and then along that way at uh, 
zooming in but it doesn't get any bigger that's the x-axis so that's 40 which is half of the 80 width oops negative 40 of course there we go so now that's bang on because all the measurements used were consistent between the two objects okay now um, from this point I'm just going to turn the snap off the models finished but what we need to do before we start sorting it out for uh, unwrapping is make sure its position is good essentially when you're going to unwrap the surface of a model you don't want to spend any time after that point playing with the mesh in any way so you really know that the mesh is finished and you're not going to do anything else with it so the last thing that happens to your modeling project is you unwrap the texture and make the template okay so um uh, that's it for this part of the tutorial. Okay, so um, we'll get on to part two presently.